and welcome to episode 82 of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay and this is my YouTube channel where I chat about all of my knitting, crocheting, crafting adventures. So welcome to the first podcast episode of 2020. Today is January 6th. It is a Monday. The kids are back to school. It's their first day back to school. It's the first normal week. After all of the holidays, I hope that you all had a wonderful holiday season. I have so much to share with you guys today. Let's just take a look. Look at all of this stuff, finished stuff to share with you guys. We've got a lot to chat about. <laughs> so first up, you guys can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady. There is a group on Ravelry for this podcast. If you head over there up at the top, hit the groups tab and search Crazy Sock Lady podcast, it should pop right up. I will have links right down below this video here on YouTube to all of the places that you can find me. Show notes will be down there below. That's the only place that you can find show notes for the podcast. Today we have obviously a ton of finished objects <laughs> and there's also a new knit along to talk about. I have some works in progress to talk about. I feel like there's a lot. So let's go ahead and jump right in with all of the things. First up, we're going to do finished objects today. We're switching it around a bit from how I normally do it. We're just going to go with it and chat about all of the finished things. Now I should say that these are not everything that I finished since the last episode. If you followed along on Vlogmas, I will link down below the video where, I should probably write this down so I don't forget, the video on Vlogmas where I showed all of the gift knits that I mailed because I don't think they were finished, all of them, by the last time that I recorded. Now if you go back and you watch all of the Vlogmas episodes, you're gonna see everything that I finished throughout December and gifted because most of the things I'm not showing today were gift knits. I did finish, I think a lot of things in December. So I'm gonna write a note down here to myself to remember to link the video below from the day that I shipped out all of the gift knits so that you guys can go check that out if you are interested. So finished objects. I'm just gonna go down through the pile here We'll chat about them all. So first up, these are a pair of socks for Wyatt. I've only got one of each of these on blockers because I just did not have enough blockers. So the other ones are finished. I don't think I'll really bother showing both, but these all do have their mates done. So this is the latest pair of socks for Wyatt. And this is out of Bumblebee Acres on their squishy sock base, I believe. Yes, on their squishy sock base. And the colorway is a, I believe it's a Lord of the Rings inspired colorway. Boromir, I'm probably pronouncing that right. I'm sorry, I'm not a Lord of the Rings. Not that I don't like it. I just don't really watch them. Um, Boromir, Captain in the White Tower colorway. So that's what this main collar is. And then this was just some leftovers. I don't even remember what it was from, but I just did the toe on both of them. And that, I thought it looked cute. So for these, I did US 1 2.25 millimeter needles, slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And I think they turned out pretty cute. So now these can be gifted to Mr. Wyatt. His sock drawer grew quite a bit unexpectedly because Austin decided to clean out his room and he found a fair amount of hand knit socks he doesn't wear them anymore and those wouldn't fit him anymore anyways they were from quite a few years ago that i made for him but they all fit wyatt every single pair so he got quite a bit more hand knit socks to add to his little stash of hand knit socks and some of them had maybe been worn once austin's just never really been super crazy about hand knit socks especially not like wyatt so yeah he got quite a few new pairs of hand knit socks now he'll have one more. I feel like that kid can't get enough of them. Okay, the next pair of socks is my 2019 Advent socks. This was the 2019 Advent skein from the Cozy Knitter. And I knit all of these socks cuff down. That's my way of doing socks. And all of them are on US 1 2.25 millimeters. 
This one I cast on 64 stitches. That's what I do for socks for myself. And the Cozy Knitter Advent is all of these different stripes. And then it came with, I chose the option to get a coordinating mini. So this is the collar that it came with for the coordinating mini. I use that for the heel or not the heel. Goodness. I use that for the cuff and the toe. And then the collar that I used for the heel was just some leftovers I had again in my stash. I just went through my little thing back here and grabbed something that I thought would look pretty well. I thought it matched fairly well. It's kind of a mix between these two. So I just grabbed that because I knew I would not have enough of the cream collar to do the heels as well. So I thought that worked out nice. And for these, I, I kept up with them fairly well towards the end of the month. I got a little behind or towards Christmas, not the end of the month, but I did finish them by the end of the year. I did, it would have worked out perfectly for me to do one stripe a day and then I would have been able to finish them on Christmas day. But like I said, I fell a little bit behind. So I still had like two more stripes to do and then the toe and the heels after Christmas. But I think they turned out great. And if she does this again, I definitely think I will order it and do these again next year. It was such a fun experience. I did, so the skein comes split into two already, two matching. So you don't have to worry about trying to split it evenly and the stripes to line up. It comes split for you already into two 50 gram skeins. So I did them concurrently. I did the cuffs before the 1st of December so that I was ready to go on December 1st with the first stripe. And then I just did one stripe a day on each. So I did the green stripe the first day of December, red stripe the second day. That was all that I did on these socks. And it worked out perfectly. And then I just decided where the heel would go and did an afterthought heel following the Kirby Werby tutorial on YouTube. I love the afterthought heel where you do not use waste yarn, you just cut right in and get it done. <laughs> so that's the second pair of socks that are finished. The third pair are my December Desert Vista Dye Work socks. So this means that I've completed the entire year of 2019. If you have watched for a while, 2018, I did not complete. I started, I think I failed in August. So I almost made it in 2018. 2019 I finished and I am planning to do it this year. I will show you my January socks in whips, but these are my December socks. This colorway is Zombodies Hanging the Lights. And it came with this coordinating collar for whichever, whatever you choose to use it for. I used it just for the heel. And again, I did an afterthought heel following the Kirby Werby tutorial on YouTube. And I will be sure to link that below. And I'm going to try to remember going forward to link it in my project pages because I have people check and I always forget to link that tutorial in my project pages. So I'm gonna be sure to link that going forward as long as I can remember. <laughs> but I loved this colorway. I'm so pleased that I finished these socks again this was 64 stitches on the US one, 2.25 millimeter. And let's see, the next finished object, I still have not cut my ends, but they are woven in. They're woven in, I just haven't snipped them all yet. But this was my advent calendar from Bumblebee Acres, their Downton Abbey advent calendar. And it started up here, this was day one, went all the way through. I have 25 minis in here. This is my round and round cowl. So this is one of my patterns that's available on Ravelry and Etsy. I will link it down below for you guys. I love this pattern. So let me go ahead and I'll try this on for you guys. Probably have my hair back in a clip, so it's probably gonna mess it up, but we'll deal with that later. So here is, you can see my ends. I don't know why I didn't snip them. <laughs> so here's the cowl. Obviously, this is a very long version. So the round and round cowl that I originally knit, I think I used eight minis. I can't remember off the top of my head. This one used 25. So it 
used quite a few. I only did six rounds instead of the eight rounds that it calls for per stripe. Yeah, I think it's nice and squishy. It fits well. I'm very pleased with the fit of this. I was kind of worried, you know, 25 minis is a lot to add to a cowl, but I think it turned out great. It blocked out wonderfully. I definitely blocked it pretty aggressively in this direction. Not so much the length, but I blocked it pretty aggressively this way so that it would be fairly wide. And I think it turned out great. Now I just need to snip those ends <laughs> all along the inside. So yeah, that's the round and round cowl. And I am going to be updating the pattern for this. I don't have a set date on when I'm going to get that done. That's on the agenda for the beginning of this year. I'm going to update that pattern with instructions on how I went about using an advent for that. And I'll include pictures of this in the pattern. So everybody, if you've already purchased the pattern, you'll get that as an update, updated version. Um, if you've purchased it on Ravelry. Etsy, I don't know. That's something I think I need to look into when patterns are updated, how to go about that on Etsy, because I don't think there's a way to send out an updated PDF to people that have purchased. If there is, please let me know if you're aware of that. I have not had to do that yet on Etsy, so I'm not sure how that'll work if you've purchased it on Etsy. That's kind of the one downfall to Etsy, I think, unless there's a way to do it and I just haven't really looked into it that much. Um, yeah, I'll have to see about that. Okay, the last thing that I wanna share with you guys in finished objects has been finished for quite a while, but it is a new design that has came out the beginning of January. This has been done since, I think over the summer of 2019. So this is a new sock design that just came out the 1st of January. This is the Battle for Hogwarts sock pattern. And I designed this for Lydia of Old Loops for her Harry Potter Prefect kits. So this was exclusive to those kits for the end of 2019. But now it is available for anybody to purchase on Etsy or Ravelry. So this one I knit out of the colorway that she sent me that was gonna go in the perfect kits. And it is a cuff down sock pattern. It does have a tutorial for the German twisted cast on for a Kitchener stitch when you get to the toe. And then it also has a stitch tutorial to help you with some of the crossed stitches that are in the design. There is the front of it. This one is a lot of fun to do. The pattern goes all the way down the front. It does have instructions for a slip stitch, heel flap and gusset. And it is available now if you are interested. I will link that down below for you guys. I was excited to be able to release that one. It's always fun when you get asked to do something that's exclusive to a company or a kit. Um, I don't know, I just think it's super fun. It's kind of a little secret design for a while and then you get to release it to the world later on. So it was really nice that I could do it, I could release it on January 1st because then my, I tried to do one pattern per month so then it was kind of like I didn't have to worry about getting work done to get a January pattern out because the work was already done for me. It had been done for months. So, all right, that is it for finished objects. I'm gonna grab my notes here because now I wanna chat with you guys about a couple of things that are going on in the Ravelry group right now. So the first thing is we do have a swapless swap open. I should have grabbed one to show you guys. I don't know that I can reach them. They're back here. I'm gonna grab this one. I don't know if I've shown you guys this one or not, but what the swapless swaps are, if you're new to the podcast and you have not heard of them before, is you receive 10 40 yard minis. There's a different yarn dyer each month that they're listed in the group. Here's just a, this is a previous yarn dyer. This is how they come. Get your 10 40 yard minis. And then it will have the yarn dyer's name, 
and all the colorways listed on the front of the bag. So this one was from Bridgefield Fiber Works. And the one that is open right now is for Four Boys Fiber. And the money is due, we have to sign up, the money is due by January 15th. So you still have just a little bit to get in there and get signed up if you're interested. And the price for those varies. It's anywhere from $35 to $45. That includes the shipping. And the price just depends on where they're shipping to, whether you're in the US, out of the US, all that type of stuff. So head over and check that out if you're interested. And then I also have a new knit along that is open in the Ravelry group. And I'm not gonna go into full details here on this episode. What I'm gonna do is record a separate video and chat more about it there. So it is the Stash Busters 2020 Cal, and I am co-hosting this with Julie of Twin Stitches Designs podcast and you can head over there's a chatter thread and I've already opened the finished objects thread in my group and then Julie has chatter and epo threads in her group as well so if you want to head over and read about the cal and then like I said I'm going to do a separate video and it'll go up around the same time this goes up so I will link it down below basically knit from your stash I have so much yarn back here that I need to use up that I want to use up. I bought it because I loved it or it was gifted to me and I so badly want to knit with it. So I'm going to talk more in the video about how I'm going about the cowl, my thoughts about stash knitting, purchasing, all of the things I will chat about in that video. If you're interested, you can head over and check it out. I'll link it down below for you guys. Um, but yes, let's turn this here a little bit. Oh, you're going to see a reflection probably. That's the stash yarn that I so badly just want to knit up. Don't we all need more hours in the day to knit our stash, I think. But so yeah, the idea is just to knit from your stash. There are not a ton of rules. There are some rules. There are some ways you can get extra entries. Check out the chatter thread or the video if you want more details. All right, I think that's it for kind of administrative stuff. Now we're gonna talk about works in progress. Oh, I did wanna mention as well, if all goes as planned, I have so much stuff to record this week, but I would like to start bringing you guys more content here on YouTube. So I'm jumping right in with my first work week this year and getting a lot recorded. So I'm also hoping to record a year in review video and put up for you guys. It'll be just chatting about what all I finished. I went through Ravelry and I totaled all of my personal projects, which are like non-design projects. And then I did my design projects as well. I'm going to link that video below if it's edited and uploaded. Um, I'll put a link down below for that if you're interested in hearing how many socks I knit in 2019. It's an insane number. Even my husband was like, what? You knit how many socks in 2019? So head over and if you're interested in hearing all of the details about my 2019 totals for knitting. But okay, now works in progress. So we will start with the very first thing that I cast on this year is a pair of socks for Eric. So his birthday is coming up the end of this month and he has been wearing his hand knit socks every day, every single day. He's always worn them occasionally, not daily. Lately, it's been every day. I'm very impressed. It makes me very, very happy. And it means that I would just want to knit him so many more socks now. So I thought I would start out the year with a pair of socks for him for his birthday, go ahead and get them done. And then I can set them aside and already have a birthday gift ready for him. So I have one sock done. I started these, like I said, on January 1st, and this is the first sock. It is completed. So for his, I've got the second one in here. I have this in my matter root bag that I picked up at Rhinebeck, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival in 2019. And I have the second sock started. 
Let's chat about the yarn real quick though before I show you the second sock. So this counts for the Stash Busters Cal. This is, it's, I've had it for years. <laughs> I don't even know how many years, but this is sock and wool socks. And the color number is 02. And it is 75% superwash virgin wool and 25% polyamide which if I'm not mistaken is like a nylon. So these do, these feel like a regia or an opal yarn. They feel amazing. I think they'll wear very nicely. The second one has been started, but I don't have a ton done on it yet. I didn't worry, I don't wanna drop anything, about matching them. They almost matched, but I'm just not concerned and I know he doesn't care. So I didn't mess with it. I got a ton of knitting done on these over the weekend, over Friday and Saturday. And I finished these, I finished them Saturday and then cast on the second one at Austin, one of Austin's basketball games. He had a tournament that ran through Friday and Saturday. And Saturday we had, which both days we had like a three hour break in between games. And then Saturday we went to the mall and for the first time ever, I knit while I walked around the mall. I don't really enjoy going to the mall. I don't, I'm not really a huge shopper. I, I don't know if I have something I'm going for, I'll go in and get it, but I'm just not really a browser, I guess. But we had some time to waste. The kids wanted to just go walk around the mall. So we went and I asked my husband, I said, will it embarrass you? And I asked the kids to, will it embarrass you if I knit while we're walking around? And they were like, no. I think they're used to me knitting <laughs> anywhere and everywhere. So I just had my purse over my shoulder and my yarn coming out of my bag. And I knit the whole time we walked around. It worked perfect. I didn't mess anything up. I didn't trip and fall and stab myself with a knitting needle. <laughs> it worked out great. So I could definitely see doing that more often. For me, it made the mall, I won't say enjoyable, but it made it tolerable and less stressful because it was pretty busy and I don't really enjoy crowds and a lot of people. Sorry, you guys can probably hear the jets. It should pass over in just a moment. <clears throat> But I'm doing these on Chow Goo needles, red lace, Magic Loop, US 1, 2.25 millimeter needles, 64 stitches. So yeah, I think I will have these done by the end of this week, I would say. It's my first work in progress of the year. And the next one that I started is a pair of socks for Wyatt. I have them in a bag from, that was a gift from my friend Pam. She brought some, I think this was from Pam. I'm almost positive. She made some bags and brought them. I think it was one that Pam made. Watch me be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was. I love, 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 love the Lorax. I've always loved Dr. Seuss, anything Dr. Seuss, but for some reason the Lorax just, Oh, I just love the book. I love the movie. We've seen it so many times. I used to have almost all of those books memorized, except for what's the one, Fox and Socks or something. <laughs> I could never memorize that one. Why I can read that one better than I can. But I used to have them all memorized. But I also have a needle cozy that's the Lorax. Can't remember where I got this, off of Etsy somewhere, I believe. Anyways. I do not have very much done on these socks. I have the cuff and then a tiny little bit. I'm working these up on US 1 2.25 millimeter needles, Knitter's Pride Carbons. I haven't used these needles in forever, but I do enjoy working with them. So I thought I would pull them out. And I did 56 stitches, cast on for his. And the yarn that I'm using let me go ahead and put this back in here. Is another deep stash yarn. This is Zia or Zia wools. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. 
and I don't know the colorway name because when I wound all this up, there must have been a, a second tag that had the collar name and it must have got thrown away. So this is the only thing I have. I don't remember the colorway name. Oops, I just dropped that. Um, I think it was something about apples or orchards. Oh, I feel bad that I lost the tag. This was a gift. Um, I think I'd done a swap with a friend and this is what she sent. Yeah, I do feel bad that I lost the tag on that, but it just had to have gotten thrown away with all the little things I had snipped off when I was winding a bunch of yarn. So this is the second thing that I cast on. I'm not really in any rush to get these done. Wyatt, he did pick out this yarn in like December, end of November-ish and for socks. So yeah, I'm not, I don't really have a timeline for these. They'll just kind of be some vanilla knitting for car knitting or just a few moments when I have just the brain space for only vanilla knitting. All right, last work in progress that we're gonna talk about. This is the only other one. I did start a new design, a new sock design that I'm not gonna show just yet, but oh, my Lanta, you guys. It is probably my favorite non-cabled sock pattern that I've done. I'm obsessed. It's all I've wanted to work on is turning out so perfect. Kind of a teaser since I'm not showing it yet, but be on the lookout because I love this one. So I do have that going and I'm hoping that'll be released in February. I'm almost done with the first sock. Then I will work up the second sock. At some point I will get testers. So keep an eye out. If you're ever interested in test knitting, follow me on Instagram. I post in my Insta stories when I am looking for test knitters. You can always choose the option to get a notification when I post a story, if you're really interested in keeping an eye out and I'll post in there when I need them and then you can sign up. I'll have like a little questionnaire for you to fill out, sign up, and then I usually choose about 10 testers depending on what I'm needing test knit. Anyways, the only other work in progress that I have is in a bag from Laughing Stitches. Wait, I think it's Laughing Stitches by NL. Everything will be linked down below shop-wise. So I have my January Desert Vista Dye Work socks in here. And what I have decided to do, I don't know that I'll really be able to show you guys. You'll really be able to see there's a lot of yarn in here. So I thought it would be fun with the Desert Vista Dye Works knit along, you're allowed one pair of monster socks throughout the year scrappy socks. So I thought it would be fun to go back and grab all of the leftovers that I have from my 2019 Desert Vista Dye Works socks for the knit along and do a pair of monster socks using that yarn. It won't use up all of the yarn because some I have quite a bit left. So what I did is I went through, I got all of the yarn out and then I sat down and when I knit my socks, I always count my rows. So I looked at the December Desert Vista Dye Work socks, figured out how many rows I did for the leg, for the foot, and then I kind of figured out the math on how many rows I would have to do per collar for it to work out to use all of the collars. So I decided I would do a different collar um, for the cuff, heel, and toe. Each of those will be from a month. And then I split the leg and the foot. I think it's like 14 rounds, 13 rounds, 14 rounds, 13 rounds, all the way down until the end. I can chat more about it as I get more done. I don't have a ton done on them, but I wrote it all down and so that I can go through and see. So the cuffs are done in the collar that I used for January of 2019, which was the Fievel colorway. I think that was just the name of it, Fievel. If all of these, I do have project pages for the ones from last year that'll have the colorway names listed. And then I'll probably update the project page for this with the names, um, but it's not done at this point yet. But this is, I got both cups done. I think I finished this one. Yeah, I did, because the yarn's cut. 
got both of them finished. And I'm knitting this on my Knitter's Pride Zings. US 1, 2.25 millimeter, 64 stitches. I don't switch it up that much. This just works for me. So both cups are done. Again, I am not worrying about matching. These are gonna be crazy, scrappy monster socks. Some of this yarn, I don't have a ton left. I mean, most of them I have a good bit. But there is a month, November, that's all I have. So I don't have a ton left. So I don't wanna have like really mess with trying to worry about collar management as far as these socks being identical. I'm just going with the flow and having them be fun and totally scrappy. I'm not bothered. So these are my January socks. And I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to go back through. Again, this will count for the stash busters because I'm using stash, using stuff that I had before January 1st of this year. So this one's gonna be a lot of fun to work up. And I could see myself always doing the Desert Vista Dye Works knit along as long as she continues them. So I could see this being a fun tradition to do each year. I mean, obviously if I do it in January of 2021, I won't have a full 12 collars because for this month I'm using Scrappy, but then I would just use the 11 collars that I had. So yeah, I could see this being something fun to continue and do each year that I do the knit along. Okay, that is it for works in progress. I did swatch for the olive leaf pullover. I haven't started it yet, so I'm not really gonna chat about it yet. I'm planning on starting it later this week, this weekend at some point. So next podcast, we will chat about it. And I do have another finished object. It's on the floor right now, blocking. I finished my Oracle shawl. So I was determined to start, you know, when I went into 2020 to have clear needles, kind of that clear my mind, clear my needles. The only thing I wanted on my needles or my hooks, crochet hooks, was scrappy projects. So I finished my Oracle shawl. That was my longest standing whip. I can't remember what month I started it, but it's on the floor blocking right now. So I'm not gonna show it because I laid it out yesterday and it's pretty much dry, but it's still just a smidge damp. So I'm not gonna pull it up. I didn't, I will say I didn't block it properly. You're supposed to pin out the edges so that they kind of point like every other thing. I didn't. My blocking mats, I bought new blocking mats and they, there were enough to make as big of a section as I needed to be able to pin it. And then I tried pinning it on, because I don't have carpet in this room. Like if I had carpet, I could have laid towels out and then pinned it into the carpet, through the towel into the carpet, but I don't have carpet in here anymore. So I was trying to pin it onto the towels and it was just not working. And I thought, you know what? I do not care. So you'll see what the edges look like. They're not as like pointed out as they should be. It's gonna be kind of roughly on the edges, but I'm not bothered. This is a full pie shawl, the Oracle shawl by Kristen Lear of Full and Vine. And I, I wanted to knit it because I wanted to knit a pie shawl, full pie to say I had knit one to, for the process. Um, I love the finished object, but I don't see it as being something that I'll wear a lot. I don't know that I'll find it wearable. That could be totally different, but I think a half pie is definitely more wearable. Anyways, all that to say, I wasn't really gonna chat about this, <laughs> this episode. I was gonna save it for next, but I do have that finished object I anticipate just having it laying over this chair and using it to put over my shoulders when I'm in here or over my lap when I'm in here knitting. So I'm not really concerned if the edges are more ruffled as opposed to pointed. You will see what I mean next episode. <laughs> but now I just have a couple of things I wanna chat with you guys about that I received in the mail. We are almost done, we are almost to the end. So I'm not gonna go into full detail about this, but 
these are the December Yarnable box. This one, I, I should have only received one, but there was a bit of a mix up and I received two December Yarnable boxes. I'm gonna do a Yarnable unboxing video. Like I have been doing every, every month <laughs> that I get, have been getting them. Um, and if you wanna know what I'm gonna do with this second box, you can head over and check out that video. It'll be going up tomorrow on January 7th. So keep an eye out on the YouTube channel here. Um, and if you are interested, you can always push the bell button here on the channel to get notified when a new video goes up. So something fun will be happening with this second box. I'm sure you can guess what I'm planning to do with it. So if you're interested seeing what's in the December Yarnable box or getting, um, or seeing what I'm gonna do with that second box, head over and check out that video. Once it goes up, I'll come back and add the link down below for it. And the Yarnable subscriptions will be reopening for new members, I guess, just subscribers <laughs> to go sign up. I'm blanking on what word I want to use there. But so if you're interested, there is a coupon code that I'll put across the screen here and put everything down below for that, that you can get $5 off your first box that you get through Yarnable. They're completely customizable boxes. I'll chat more about them on the unboxing video, but I'll put a link down below that's an affiliate link and you can use that coupon code. And right now, since they are going to open on January 7th, I believe it's the 7th through the 11th, that it will be open for new people to go sign up to get in on those. And if you go today on the 6th, or on the 7th before it opens up. You can go ahead and sign up, put your email address in, and then what they will do is notify you when that is open and ready for you to sign up. So head over and check that out if you're interested. Keep an eye out for that video, something fun for that second box. Last thing that I wanna show you guys that I got in the mail. I chatted about this before. Clark and L is doing a year of minis and let me just start this by saying that this is kind of the perfect thing, I think, coming off of December and having those advents that I opened daily. I kind of got to the end of December and it was just like, oh, I miss my advents. I miss opening something. So Clark and Alice doing the year of minis. It is a different thing for each quarter of the year. So there's winter, spring, summer and fall. Yes, <laughs> four quarters. And you get 13 minis per quarter, one mini per week of the quarter. So I have the winter right here. It, it does not fit very well in this yarn bowl. I need a basket or something to put it in. Um, this is the first quarter. I've already opened the first one. All 13 are in here. They come in little bags stamped for you to open each week. I have opened the first one. So right now, Clark and Elle, they sold out of the original amount of winter quarter mini sets that they had. You get 13 20 gram minis. They sold out of the winter and they had so many people requesting to still be able to get it, even though it had started already, that they opened up more orders for those. So there are still some available. You can head over and check out. It is a pre-order and they won't ship until February. So the first one was to be opened the first week of January, that first first week of the first quarter. So if you go ahead and order the winter one now, you are gonna get it late. So I want everyone to be aware of that. It does say that in the Etsy listing. I will put everything down below. Um, I think that was all I wanted to say about that, that you would be getting it late. So I'm gonna put out a major warning with showing the first mini that I opened that if you haven't gotten yours yet, haven't opened it yet, you're gonna be one of the ones that are getting it late and you'll be starting to open them late. I will tell you when to look away. Cause I want to go ahead and show you guys. Cause maybe you want to see to see if you want, if you think you're going to like the colorways and you want to see what it's going to look like. So I want to go ahead and show it, but just know if you don't want to be spoiled on what the first week is, look away, count to 20, close your eyes, count to 20. 
and then look back and it'll be off the screen. I won't even talk about it, okay? So start counting now. So that is the first week, first quarter. And they do also already have the spots open for the spring quarter. I think when I looked this morning, there were 34 still available. Did I write that down? Yes. 34 available and you will receive those before April. So head over if you wanna get in on the spring one or if you still wanna get in on the winter one, just knowing you'll get it just a little bit late. I think it's super fun and after, Advent, it's not one a day, obviously, which that would be a lot, one a day throughout the whole year. But one a week, I think, is, is a lot of fun. And you don't have to purchase the whole year at once. She just has the winter ones, you know, that you can get in on a little late now, and then the spring ones that you can go ahead and order to get them to start opening in April. So I think that's kind of it. This has definitely been a longer episode, but there was so much to chat about and share with you guys. Um, let's see. Life stuff. We had a great Christmas, a great New Year's Eve. The kids had a wonderful break. I think they're happy to be back at school. I'm happy that life is kind of returning to normal. I'm someone who very much I thrive off of routine and schedules. And for me, breaks from school can be really hard. The slow mornings are kind of fun. You know, I don't have to worry about getting everyone up and out the door. The kids kind of sleep in. I get a little bit more quiet time in the morning to drink coffee and knit. But at the same time, then I kind of get like frazzled and I feel like the house gets out of order and I don't stay on my cleaning routine as well. So they start out great, but then after half a week to a week, I'm like, okay, I'm craving my routine big time. So I'm happy that everything is kind of getting back in order around the house. I've had quite a bit of cleaning and things to catch up on today since it's the first day that everyone's out of the house but me. <laughs> but yeah, we had a great holiday season. I hope that you guys did. Um, lots coming up on the YouTube channel as long as I get everything recorded this week. So be sure to keep an eye out. And I'm so happy. 2019 was kind of a rough year for me. I'm not going to lie. It was person, like work-wise, it was amazing. I feel so blessed with how things went work-wise in 2019. Personally, in my personal life, 2019 was a bit rough. Um, yeah. My mother passed away. Some health stuff. So 2019 was tough for me personally. I am can't say that I'm sad it's over. <laughs> I'm looking forward to a fresh start with 2020, positive mindset going forward and hoping for a better year in a lot of ways than last year. Um, yeah, so I did that kind of, I feel like ends this on a little bit of a sour note. I did not mean to do that. Happy 2019's over, looking forward to this new year and I hope that you guys will stick around throughout 2020 to see what all I get up to knitting wise. I'm thinking about doing a vlog occasionally. Let me know down below if that's something you guys would be interested in and how often, like once a week, every other week, once a month. Let me know what you guys think below. And I will be back probably next week. I would like to try to get in the mindset of doing this once a week. So we will see. I should be back next week with a new episode. But until then, I hope that you guys get lots of knitting done and that you have a great week. Happy knitting. Bye.